hace mucho tiempo estudiando español y todavía no puedo, no, no pueda hablar con fluidez. ¿Qué estoy haciendo mal? I asked my Spanish teacher, Fabiola, wondering when I was going to get good at Spanish. <laughs> like, really good. I've been studying off and on since I was in middle school, and as a middle-aged adult, I can still only speak confidently to three-year-olds. <laughs> Fabiola, a Colombian immigrant who has a degree in finance and now teaches Spanish part-time to adults, cleared her throat and looked skyward, searching for a way to explain my plight diplomatically. She said, has trabajado muy duro. I had worked really hard, and just like non-native English speakers, she said, puedes comunicar. I can make myself understood, albeit haltingly and often with the assistance of pantomime. <laughs> she said, esto, this, is something to celebrate. I frowned, and she adopted the conciliatory tone you use with children when they want a cookie, and you remind them that dinner's almost ready. <laughs> Puedes mantener este nivel de español por el resto de tu vida, sin problema. Fabiola was telling me that I could maintain this level of Spanish for the rest of my life and be happy. She said I could travel to Spanish-speaking countries, enjoy Spanish-language movies, and occasionally eavesdrop on strangers. If you want to speak more fluidly, she said, you're going to have to work on it. Like, really work. But she said, I don't, I don't know that, this, that achieving this level of mastery will bring you joy. That didn't make sense. And then she said something that totally bewildered me, and not just because I couldn't understand all the words. She said, working for something unattainable, inalcanzable, sometimes is more fun. Wait. I was supposed to be happy speaking mediocre Spanish after studying for decades? No entiendo. That can't be right. I paused to translate and then started throwing words out, Jackson Pollock style, hoping they conveyed meaning. <laughs> no, no es bueno. Quiero hablar y participar en, en la lengua y la cultura de los hispano, hispano hablantes, pero de la manera correcta. I want to speak good, I, I mean, well, I said. Ojalá, she replied, which basically means, good luck with that. <laughs> My Spanish remains passable, maybe a notch above horrible, but I often get an upgrade for enthusiasm. To be honest, I know this is my fault. I learned the tricks of learning Spanish without learning Spanish a long time ago. I was in a summer Spanish language immersion program in San Miguel de Allende during college. I needed a foreign language to graduate, and since I'd been studying the Spanish ABCs, or ABCs, since I was 10, Espanol was the obvious choice. By the time, but time had not made the language easier to learn. Within a week of the six-week program, I was mentally exhausted. The relentless talking, thinking, and listening in Spanish gave me headaches. I did not graduate to that magical state of dreaming in Spanish. I did not experience that beautiful mind moment where words, conjugation, syntax, and meaning were magically conveyed to me without trying. I struggled. I was frustrated a lot, and I often just wanted my classmates to leave me alone. I wanted to zone out. My brain hurt. But we had a chatty group of wannabe Spanish speakers who were happy to participate in inane conversations about food. Me gusta tacos. <laughs> the weather. Hace mucho color hoy día. And boring, unnecessary descriptions of family and friends. Mi papá no trabajo. Él es jubilado. Él es muy amable, simpático y alto. But I learned 
learned early that most people wanted to practice their bad Spanish more than they wanted to listen to me speak bad Spanish. So I developed a strategy. Most of us couldn't ask proper open-ended questions like, what are your thoughts on free will versus self-determination? <laughs> Instead, we asked each other scintillating questions like, do you like it here? And did your parents have other children? Many of the questions elicited yes or no answers, which meant that you'd then have to quickly think of another question to ask in a long, excruciating linguistic game of tag you're it. Most people would loudly state si or no, imitating a thicker than necessary accent. <laughs> but I found that single word responses were a dead giveaway that you hadn't learned shit. <laughs> Well-meaning listeners, especially teachers, wanted you to elaborate using complete sentences. So they would double down with more questions that were more complicated, trying to coax you to try harder. My fight or flight response was to flee, but it's difficult to escape a polite conversation in a language immersion program. I mean, that's the reason we all signed up. No escape. And I really wanted to learn Spanish. But I also hate being bad at things. I, I gravitate toward things that I do well, or at the very least, that I can do badly in private. Learning a language is something you have to do badly, out loud, in front of people to improve. There is no hiding your mistakes. And I'll be honest, no me gusta. So in San Miguel, I learned a trick that I later used in Barcelona, Sevilla, Santander, Malaga, and Costa Rica. Never use single word responses like si or no. Instead, I'd casually, confidently say things like, claro que si, tienes razón, por supuesto, estoy de acuerdo, que bien castón, creo que si, or, tiene sentido. These all roughly translate to, yeah, sure, <laughs> but with more gusto. I jotted them all down in a notebook and practiced before classes or meetings. If I was lucky, claro que si, could save me from conjugating dozens of verbs. <laughs> this is why, years later, I'm cursed with passable, if not appalling, Spanish. By now, you might be wondering, why do I care? And honestly, I don't know. At this point, Spanish is both comforting and agonizing. I've been learning it, forgetting it, and relearning it for so long that I don't know what I'd do if I stopped. I guess I have this idea that I should be the type of person who speaks a second language, and Spanish is the logical choice. I've tried to get serious over the years, before 2020, I attended in-person conversation classes at local restaurants with groups of Spanish practicing strangers and a few kind and generous native Spanish speakers. I'm not a shy person, but at the meetups that are often held at cafes and bars, I steered clear of sitting next to native Spanish speakers. I didn't want to inflict my regressive verb conjugation skills on them. Supongtivo? is my nemesis. <laughs> it is an emotional verb tense in Spanish that has no English equivalent. It is used to express desires, doubts, wishes, and possibilities. It's essential. It's also something I should know, but I actively and willfully avoid it because it's hard. Luckily, the other elementary school level adult Spanish language learners don't recognize when I completely screw it up, so I don't have to stress over it. But one day, my luck ran out, and I found myself next to Ernesto from Chile. He's one of the patient, kind-hearted native Spanish speakers who come to our meetups to socialize and help us practice. I groaned when the seat next to him was the only one available. I immediately resolved to dig deeper, 
then claro que sí. I really couldn't stomach another stilted conversation about jobs, hobbies, and siblings. Instead, I employed the limited vocabulary rolling around in mi cabeza to pose a question that I really wanted an answer to. ¿Por qué no es esto una tortura para ti? I was guessing at the word for torture because I remembered hearing it once on a telenovela, <laughs> and I knew it was a cognate, but I wasn't sure if it was tortura or torture. Anyway, the complete phrase roughly translates to, why the hell would you put yourself through this? He didn't look like a masochist. Ernesto laughed in genuine surprise at the question because maybe he was also surprised that I knew the word for torture in Spanish. I could tell that he wasn't quite sure how to answer. He took a breath and spoke with a deliberate lack of speed. This was greatly appreciated. On average, native Spanish speakers talk 25% faster than native English speakers, cramming in an extra two to three syllables every second. That's too fast for me to decipher. To compensate, Ernesto over-enunciated and took lengthy pauses to allow me time to translate. He spoke as if I was a toddler, but a precocious one. <laughs> Ernesto said that people, especially Americans, willing to step out of their comfort zone and be bad at learning were a lot nicer to be around than those who were adamant that being born in an English-speaking country was some divine right that absolved them from learning anything about the cultures beyond our borders. I immediately thought of the two guys I overheard. They were not members of our group, but one shouted, dos porvesas, por favor, at the bartender, who was actually Filipino. <laughs> Ernesto said that in contrast, Almost everyone at the Speaking Spanish Badly meetups had traveled outside the country, at least. Everyone had watched more than a few subtitled movies without grumbling about it. Everyone was happier and less uptight, too. That reminded me of an article about the fact that people who have had Botox rate their happiness as slightly higher than average. <laughs> Researchers have surmised that it's because those people now have physically have difficulty frowning. <laughs> less frowning, less unhappiness. Interesting, right? That made me think there's probably also a special euphoria that comes from being unable to speak intelligently about politics, philosophy, racial injustice, or the daily news. Instead, we were applauding each other for remembering the word for avocado. <laughs> Aguacate. It's a little tricky. And then when someone struggles to explain something, we all wait patiently with bated breath, no matter how benign, uninteresting, and downright stupid that statement would be if spoken in English. One person says in broken Spanish that they like to go swim, sometimes at the beach, in the water when the sun is almost gone, but during the day when there is still a pretty red and yellow light in the sky. <laughs> Something they describe because they don't know the word for sunset. <laughs> and neither do most of us. <laughs> in response, someone asks, also in bad Spanish, if the person is ever afraid to be in the water because and then they pause when they can't remember the next word, so they just start to hum. Bonum, 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 bonum. And everybody laughs, and everybody gets it. Not because the joke about Jaws is particularly funny, but because we are funny. We aren't embarrassed when people at surrounding tables look over with exasperation because it must also be a little torturous to overhear people speaking a foreign language loudly and badly. <laughs> kind of like listening to the kid next door practice the tuba. <laughs> Bystanders occasionally roll their eyes as if to say, just have that dumb conversation in English. What's the point? It's obvious that none of us are likely to become fluent in Spanish. 
But now I get it when Ernesto says that he comes for the people and the camaraderie, not the stimulating conversation. So do I. Don't get me wrong. Todavía quiero mejorar. Quiero hablar y entender español mejor. Claro que sí. But finally, it dawns on me that my teacher Fabiola was right. I don't need to wait to master the language to enjoy it. Gracias a todos.